Nutrients are critical for cannabis growth, but so many growers fall into the same traps. Stick around and I'll break down the three most common mistakes to watch out for. Hey, but before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots, the easiest way to feed your high value plants. You mix Grow Dots in once at the beginning of your grow and they feed your plants all the way to harvest. You don't have to worry about nutrient burn or nutrient lockout. Grow Dots does all the hard work for you. Check them out over realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, High C. This is one I hear over and over again, and I think we can help. Okay, I'm going to assume that most growers don't make the nutrient mistake that I made, which was just thinking, oh, I've got some soil in there. It'll feed my plants the whole way through. Yeah, there are soils like that. You know, there's water-only soils out there. You just, you got to understand what you're doing. There's no substitute for experience, I'll be honest. Well, I made the mistake of buying... I think it was like pro mix or something. That's not a super soil. No. And I did not know the difference. Yeah. Between. So we'll assume that not every grower is as incompetent as I was when I first started, but let's talk about the most common mistakes that growers make when it comes to nutrients. Sure. You know, the first thing I would say, or that I see a lot is people buying things that they don't understand, you know, falling for these marketing pitches, you know, huge buds or, you know, stuff like that. The bloom boosters were the worst because they would charge hundreds of dollars for them. And for the most part, they really weren't necessary. They certainly weren't worth it, so. I'm thinking uh, bloom boosters, but I'm also thinking sure. of when I first got into growing, looking at these intimidating 20 bottle nutrient lines. Yeah, there was 12 bottles. There was the grandmaster level that was like 16 bottles or something like that. And yeah, you want to understand what they're doing. So stick to the basics. It is really not that complicated that the macronutrients that plants need are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the N, P, and K. You've got some secondary nutrients, the calcium, the magnesium, the sulfur, you don't have to worry about too much. Uh, and then the micronutrients, which you don't have to worry about too much. As a matter of fact, that's a great example. A micronutrient package is very inexpensive. Okay, you can include that in on your, your NPK. You can include that on just about any product for pennies, you know, literally. But some brands will sell, sell you micronutrients, and it's a, uh, just a specific bottle, and it's just a little bit of micronutrients. And just as I said, that's not the same thing as grow micro and bloom. Micro is your base when it comes to that. Okay, so let's talk about that, because I have noticed a lot of the nutrient companies have kind of simplified things. The old method of selling 12 bottles doesn't seem to work anymore. Well, come on. It's not $325 an ounce anymore. Mm, you know okay. what I mean? It's $85 an ounce, and that's, gonna, that, that's going to affect the inputs. Okay, and market sophistication sure. and just making it simple. So what do I need to know if I'm, if I'm going to go out and buy nutrients? Make it simple for me. You need to know how much. You need to know how much nutrients to put on. We make jokes. We call them more ons because they just want to pour more on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. By no means is that the solution. If you're not feeling well because you overate and then somebody says, well, you just need to eat a little bit more here. You need to have some chicken soup or a turkey sandwich. Oh, you know what I mean? So uh, you don't want to pour more on. You want to have an understanding of what a plant looks like when it's overfed, what a plant looks like when it's underfed, what a plant with too much nitrogen looks like, what a calcium deficient. These, there's nutrient guides that you can get, nutrient deficiency guides. Literally, you can yell it into your phone and you would understand this stuff in 60 seconds. Okay. And so what I'm thinking of is grow dots, or I think Canna has like just a two part sure. solution. Yep. You mentioned a three part solution, but these kind of cover the basics. And if you use them the way that you're supposed to use them, they get you about 95% of the way. Absolutely. That's your NP and K, that's your sulfur and your calcium and magnesium or your micronutrients. And then it becomes these are plants that are specific to different areas. So you have an equatorial sativa that's going to have different nutrient needs than this short fat indica uh so then it becomes just just playing with them uh the amounts and then there will be some things that uh every cannabis plant will like i'm thinking of like silica 
Mm -hmm. If you start playing with silica, it just toughens the, strengthens the leaf itself. So the bugs find it undesirable. The uh, fungal hyphes can't plant themselves in there so much. Uh, stuff like that. Okay, I want to take a step back. You mentioned different plants coming from different areas, yeah. having different needs. Sure. Uh, I've heard you say the word calcium hog before. Yeah, or, or just heavy feeder. There's some that can handle you know, 50% more fertilizer than others. There's others that, and you'll see it. Like I said, our nutrient deficiency, deficiency guide is very simple to follow. Uh, burnt tips curled down, really serrated edges are a sign that you're getting too much, uh, too much nutrient in there, specifically too much nitrogen. Magnesium, calcium, they're very uh, obvious uh, signs. You know, magnesium is literally like, uh, oh, I'm sorry, calcium is literally like dead spots on there, like these brown dead spots necrotic spots magnesium is that intervenal chlorosis where the plant will get really light and the veins will stay like dark or purple so there's a very easy signs to check this out uh, and when you notice a deficiency right at the start by the way not after 10 days that's when you say, hey, I'm going to play around with a little bit of CalMag. I'm going to play out a little bit of Epsom salts in there. I'm going to go buy a bottle of CalMag. So you can have two plants growing right next to each other same nutrients and one of them might need a little bit more than the other one does yeah i mean a plant that's going to grow grow eight foot tall because it's a, t a, it's a sativa or a short fat indica plant are going to need different nutrients mm -hmm. okay and just that's why me personally i like to grow from clone rather than seed because i can get some advice from the person that gave that to me this is a heavy feeder or back off she does not like a lot of nutrient or you're gonna need ton. This is a calcium hog right here. Make sure you give it plenty of calcium or magnesium, whatever it is. You mm -hmm. know, so it is nice to at least get a little bit of instructions from your friend that gave you the clone. Or once you're familiar with that particular strain and you keep cutting and cloning and it's true. Yep. Then, then you know what you're getting into going into it. Absolutely. Uh, it's not that tough though. It's really not uh, 3D chess. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's some base nutrients and then identifying for the most part what I see is calcium or magnesium deficiencies and uh, it's pretty easy to correct those that's the one bottle and they make it easy it's called CalMag <laughs> so that's just me those are the biggest mistakes that I see growers making over and over again but what about you what's the biggest mistake you've ever made while feeding your plants let me know in the comments and if you dug this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, share this video with another grower you know, and check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommended. I know you'll dig them.